If you have a 3D printer and you want to do multi-colored prints and you only have one extruder, this video may be for you. Stay tuned. Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna start making multicolored prints with a one extruder 3D printer. The Ender 3 to be exact, that's what I have. I have an Ender 3 and a Disway, and they only have one extruder head, but you can do multicolors. And here's some test cubes to show you how the multicolors work. This was done on the Ender 3, and this was done on the Disway. I have two different 3D printers, basically the same. One's a clone of the Ender 3, and basically, what we're gonna do is I have two programs I'm gonna show you on both of them it's the most two popular programs out there it is ultra make a cure and Prusa slicer I'm gonna show you how to set up a 3d print that changes color midway and now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make it where it's printing at a certain level it stops and then goes into a filament change where it pulls off to the side and we can change the filament out flush it out and then it'll start again and you can do multiple colored prints like this spider-man here and you might be wondering like I got this file right on Thingiverse and I'll put it down below and basically what it is is it's multiple layers they put the colors on different layers so if you look at it from this angle you could see that we started off with the white then we moved to the black and then the blue and then the red whoever made the model made it perfect so you could actually print it that way now on this file I actually did this file in Prusa slicer and I did it at the layers I want to do it at they do have a pre G code one that you could do this with but I want to show you how you can make your own G-Code using Prusa Slicer and Ultra Maker Cura. I do suggest you start off with these just to learn how to change the filament because there's a little tricks I'm going to show you. So make sure you watch the end of the video because it, I will show you some tricks that you have to do with the printer to make sure that it's going to print correctly. It's really not that hard. There's just certain steps that you need to follow to make sure it works. So let's get over to the computer. I'm going to start with Prusa Slicer and then I'm going to go over to Ultra Maker's Cura. So we're going to have a two, a two for one in this one. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so here we are on Thingiverse. We'll go ahead and type in Thundercats because that's what I want to do. I'll do with that Thundercats badge. You have several versions, and if you could see, they're lifted up so you can kind of see them. But I'm gonna go for this one right here, the Thundercats logo, because I'm an 80s kid and I loved the Thundercats when I was younger. Download this, let that download. Once it's done, oh, let's unzip that real quick. You do have to unzip these, unzip that. Boom, now we got the Thundercats logo. Go into File, STL. On a Mac, you could hit Spacebar. You could see that it has layers. So we could start off with red and end in black. And that's what we're gonna do. And I have both those filaments. Let's go ahead and launch Prusa Slicer. We're gonna do that one first. And if you didn't see my Prusa Slicer for beginners video, you could see that right here. But we're gonna click on this right here and we're gonna add in Thundercats logo. Go to the files, open up to STL, hit open. And that's gonna be a little big. I'm trying to make this a short video for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go 50 percent for the scale factor so that way it's a little bit smaller and the print will be a little quicker so that way I could show you guys how this works and we don't need any supports we don't need anything else we need a brim or anything like that so we're gonna go ahead and hit slice my settings are pre installed so know what filament you have and know what temperatures they are and now if you see we can look at the layers and we can see where changes begin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking to see where that final layer, where it starts drawing the cat, because that's where we're gonna want our black. See where it starts drawing that? Now, this would be the layer I wanna change it on. So we're looking at layer 15, and if we go down, you don't want it on this layer because then you'd be drawing black on the red. So we'll start off with red, and then we get to this layer right here, 15, where it's drawing the cat, that's the layer that we want put in. And if you just look at what I did there, I, I, I just clicked this plus symbol right here, which Prusa Slicer makes it really easy. And if I hit slice again, now we got two different colors. So we can see, boom. So the yellow will actually be the red. And then as it goes up, the red will actually be the black. And that, that'll give us the two tone. All you do from here is export G code. So we're gonna export that out, Thundercats. I'm gonna put that to the desktop. Okay, I showed you how to do that. Let's go ahead and minimize this. We're gonna go again to Thingiverse and I'll leave this description down in the link below. This is the test cube that we're going to use to change the color. We'll download that. All right, that is done downloading. We'll go to the download folder. And once again, we'll unzip 
the filament test cube. And we'll go ahead and open up Cura. And you can do the Thundercat one if you want. I'm just showing you both of the test cube and Thundercat. We're going to be printing the Thundercat today, but the test cube, I just want to show you. That way, if you're just testing it out, you can learn how you can change the filament. Make sure all my settings are correct. Okay, we'll slice this. All right, we'll go to preview. And this one's a little bit harder. It's not as good as Prusa Slicer. And I've switched over to Prusa Slicer because my M1 Mac, and you can see that video here, I won't run Cura as well as it does Prusa Slicer. I'm thinking right about here. So that's layer 50. I want to do a color change. We need to go to expressions, host process, G code modifier. And we're going to add a script and we're going to go to change filament. And what we're going to do is we're going to change filament at layer height 50. And that's when it'll switch over. Everything else you can leave the same. That's all we're doing. We're just changing the filament. It's going to go through the process and you'll see that process in a moment. So we'll go ahead and slice that. And you know what? I'll probably do this one on the ender just to show you guys how it works. So we'll go ahead and save to disk and we'll save the desktop de test cube. I also have a video on the basics of Cura, which you could see right here. So that way you want to learn how to work with Cura. All right, so let's go over to the printers. Right. So here we are on my 3D printer side of things. This is the Ender 3, pretty much stock, except for my new Sun Lu filament holder, which I'm doing a review on next week. So make sure you stick around for that video if you like my videos. And I have the Disway right here, which is basically a clone of the Ender 3. What we're gonna do is I'm loading up the filament. I'm gonna start with red for the Thundercat, and I'm gonna need the black eventually, but I'm gonna start black. Oop loading up the red right now. Hatchbox, Tech Bear is the black. I really like Tech Bear, very strong filament. What I'm gonna do is I'll switch them in between so that way you can see the process of what you gotta do to make sure you do not move this when you're changing the filament and how you can kind of do that. Little tips and tricks. It's not really that technical, it's just stuff that I've learned that may help you. If you don't have OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi, it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. You can see my video right here. It shows you how to set up a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint so that way you can control your 3D printers from your computer and transfer files over there. It just makes everything that much easier. I got these things loaded up with filament. We're gonna go ahead and get them started printing. And once they're started printing, we'll go ahead and change the filament out. With the G-code, we'll automatically do it. It'll just stop. What's really cool is you can print it right from your phone. So when it's done, it stops, pulls out part of the filament. So we're gonna go ahead and pull. We're not gonna push down on anything. We're gonna gently grab behind here, pull this in, and pull out the rest of the filament. Try not to move the x-axis. What I like to do is leave this loose right here and unscrew it and have a little bit of nub right there just so it's easier for us. We're gonna go ahead and cut it, pull that out. All right, just to make life easier, clip it like that at a 45 so you have that kind of edge. I'm gonna go ahead and load it gently into this. Gently squeeze, let it come through. And that's why we take this tip off so we're not moving it around. Screw that gently in, putting no pressure. If you move this, you screw up your whole print. And now what we're gonna do is gently push it through. Okay, didn't move anything. I'm gonna hit the button. And it's gonna heat up again to the 210 that I like to work with. When it's ready, it starts beeping like that. I'm gonna hit the button and it'll start extruding more filament through. And we're gonna go down to extrude more because I wanna make sure it's definitely blue. And now we're gonna go down to resume print. And now it should continue printing. Now once again, it starts beeping. That means it's done. It's waiting for us to unload it. Again, we're gonna try not to move this axis at all. Loosen this up right here. We keep that nice and loose before we even start the print. Don't put any pressure on the Z axis. Pull it out a little bit, and then we're gonna strip it. I'm gonna pull it right to the end, right there, and then we're just gonna pop it out, and then you got a nub on the front. Take your scissors, chop that off. So that way there's no friction in between you pulling this out. So now we'll pull it out the rest of the way. Take the black filament, 
Got like a needle nose. Release a little bit of pressure. Gently bring it in. Have it slide out just a little bit. Put your end on it. Tighten it up. Gently push it through. Hit the resume button. Once it's heated up, hit the button again. It'll start extruding. Once it's done, pull that mess out of there. Get done. Resume the frame. Why you should get a glass bed. Look how easy that comes off. It's your multicolor right there. Came out really good. So that's how you 3D print multicolors. Hopefully I helped you. It's on two different printers, but they're kind of the same, the Disway and the Ender 3, but it's kind of two different printers. They're all basically work the same. The biggest thing is getting the G-code right so you can make cool looking prints. Now, you cannot do three-dimensional prints. They will come out more like the cube, but I did want to show you how to do it in Cura and how to do it in Prusa Slicer. They both work kind of the same. Prusa's a little bit easier. I am liking Prusa Slicer more and more as I use it, and I had to start using because I have an M1 Mac and Prusa Slicer works. Cura, not so much. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. That's it for me, guys. Hopefully this video helped you in some way. And if it did, pay it forward, like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make another video. If these videos are valuable to you. And remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. I think I have a new logo design. What do you think? It'll be Spider-Man, Crazy Will Tech Show, Thundercats. Ho! I know what you're thinking. Crazy Will's Tech Show's over. What do I do now? Real simple, guys. You hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button. And then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year.